Hi, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to The Reading Corner. I was not expecting to do this video today. I was expecting to do a whole different video. However, this just got released, and so I had to record my reaction and post it for you guys. We just got an exclusive Iron Flame excerpt posted on a Today Show article. Oh my gosh, I cannot contain my excitement right now. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've been waiting all day to do this reaction. Oh my gosh, let's just jump right in. Just 56 days until Iron Flame hits bookshelves and e-readers everywhere. Come on, like you're not counting? But Rebecca Yaros has gifted a little tiny teaser to keep you warm. She and her publishers with Red Tower Books have given Today.com an exclusive excerpt from her anticipated sequel to Fourth Wing, her romantic sea novel that swiftly took over book talk and bestsellers lists when published in the spring. Iron Flame, out November 7th, is the second chapter in this five-book epic about a young woman, Violet, who's trying to survive her lessons at a school for elite dragon riders. It has adventure, danger, secrets, romance. It deals with the fallout of what Violet's discovered in the first book, Yara told Today.com this summer in an interview, and we can expect the world to expand and for the mysteries to deepen. Yaros also has more teasers in store. Check out her Instagram, September 15th, for an announcement. And with that, happy reading. Reprinted by permission of Red Tower Books, an imprint of Entangled Publishing, some of this content includes profanities. An excerpt from Iron Flame. A third of you will be dead by next July. If you want to wear red or black, then you earn it, Dane shouts, his voice rising with each word. You earn it every single day. Kath digs his red claws into the masonry and leans over Dane's head, swinging his sword tail behind him in a serpentine motion as he blows a hot breath of steam over the crowd that sours my stomach. Dane really needs to check Kath's teeth because there has to be a bone stuck in there decaying or something. Cries sound in the courtyard, and a first year to the right, tail section, breaks out of formation and sprints back toward the parapet, racing through the aisles between cadets. No, no, no. We have a runner, Roderick mutters. Shit. I cringe. My heart sinks as two others from Third Wing decide to follow his example, their arms pumping wildly as they make a break for it from first squad of their tail section. This isn't going to end well. Looks contagious, Quinn adds as they race by. Fuck, they actually think they'll make it. Emojin sighs, her shoulders dropping. The trio nearly collides directly between the center of our wing, our section, then bolts toward the opening in the courtyard wall where the parapet lies. Eyes on Solas, Terran shouts. I look forward again, watching Solas narrow one eye to a slit and swivel his head as he draws a full, rumbling breath. Lead fills my chest as I glance back over my shoulder and glimpse the runners nearing the parapet. The dragons didn't let them get that far last year. He's toying with them, and at this angle, oh shit. Solus extends his neck, tilts his head horrifyingly low, and curls his tongue, fire churning up his throat. Get down, I shout, lunging for Sloane and tackling her to the ground as fire blasts overhead, the flame so close that heat singes every patch of exposed skin on my body. To Sloane's credit, she doesn't cry out as I cover as much of her body as I can, curling over her, but the soul-rendering screams behind us are unmistakable. I open my eyes long enough to see Eric laying flat over the redhead under the endless stream of fire. Taren's roar fills my head as lava licks along my arched back. A scream musters at the base of my throat, but I can't breathe in this inferno, let alone give it voice. As quickly as it struck, the heat dissipates, and I fill my lungs with precious oxygen, gasping for breath between shoving off the gravel to my feet. I turn to face the aftermath as the second and third years around me rise. Those at the back of our section who acted when I shouted our lie. Those who didn't aren't. Solas took out the runners, one of our first years, and at least half of the third squad. Chaos erupts. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, what the heck? So, does that mean that Violet now has a burn going down her back? Or did... Oh my god. Or did Taryn protect her? Did she get down fast enough? Because her back is where the signet mark is. It's where her tattoo is. So, does that protect her? I'm so confused. I need more and we're not going to get more until apparently September 15th, which is three days from now because it is now September 12th. Oh my God. Oh my God. Reading the first part about Dane talking about how many of them will be dead by July sparked my memory. And so I went back to Fourth Wing and he copied Zane's words. Oh my God. What are we doing? Are we trying to torture her here? What are we doing? And by her, I mean Violet, because we know that Dane sent 
Zayden to get killed as well as her and the rest of Zayden's little squad. So what is he doing when he repeats Zayden's words? I don't know, but I still don't like him. Trust me, he's still annoying. The excerpt reminded me of a scene in the beginning of Fourth Wing, and so I went and double-checked, and in chapter three, this is what happens. A cadet bolts out of Third Wing, screaming as he makes a run for the stone keep behind us. We all turn to look as he sprints for the giant arched door at the center. I can almost see the words carved into the arch from here, but I already know them by heart. A dragon without its rider is a tragedy. A rider without their dragon is dead. Once bonded, Riders can't live without their dragons, but most dragons can live just fine after us. It's why they choose carefully, so they're not humiliated by picking a coward. Not that a dragon would ever admit to making a mistake. The red dragon on the left opens its vast mouth, revealing teeth as big as I am. That jaw could crush me if it wanted, like a grape. Fire erupts along its tongue, then shoots outward in a macabre blaze toward the fleeing cadet. He's a pile of ash on the gravel before I can even make it to the shadow of the keep. 68 dead. Heat from the flames blasts the side of my face as I jerk my attention forward. If anyone else runs and is likewise executed, I don't want to see it. More screaming sounds around me. I lock my jaw as hard as I can to keep quiet. There are two gusts of heat, one to my left and then another to my right. Make that 70. The navy dragon seems to tilt its head at me as if its narrowed golden eyes can see straight through me to the fear of fisting my stomach and the doubt curling insidiously around my heart. I bet it can even see the wrap binding my knee. It knows I'm at a disadvantage, that I'm too small to climb its foreleg and mount, too frail to ride. Dragons always know. But I will not run. I wouldn't be standing here if I quit every time something seemed impossible to overcome. I will not die today. The words repeat in my head just like they had before the parapet and on it. I force my shoulders back and lift my chin. The dragon blinks which might have been a sign of approval or boredom, and looks away. I'm already starting to make connections here, and that was Scale looking at her with a sign of approval, I think, knowing what happens in fourth wing after this. I'm pretty sure that was a sign of approval. Also, I'm pretty sure that the red dragon was Dane's dragon. As I'm sitting here editing, I also realized that not only did we get a glimpse of Scale, we also have parallels to the fact that the runners came from the third wing, which also happened in fourth wing. Anyone else feel like changing their mind? Zayden shouts, scanning the remaining rows of cadets with the same shrewd gaze of the navy blue dragon behind him. No? Excellent. Roughly half of you will be dead by this time next summer. The formation is silent except for a few untimely sobs from my left. A third of you again the year after that, and the same your last year. No one cares who your mommy or daddy is here. Even King Tari's second son died during a session. So tell me again. Do you feel invincible now that you've made it into the writer's quadrant? Untouchable? Elite? No one cheers. This is what I mean when I said, is Dane trying to annoy Violet, get under her skin by repeating Zayden's own words in the second book? What is his motive here? I'm so confused, but whatever, that's what he chose for words. Speaking of the excerpt, when they mentioned Sloane, I was really sad. It didn't show because I'm so excited to get this excerpt, but I was really sad because I was reminded of Liam and the fact that he asked Violet to protect her. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Also, we just got mention of Roddick and Emojin, and we know that Violet's there since this is from her point of view. So how many of Zayden's crew went back to the school. That's what I want to know. And where is Zayden? Because I'm pretty sure he's not going back. Oh my god. Is he going back? I don't know. I don't know. Also, I'm a little scared because I saw through a post on Instagram that Rebecca Yaros mentioned that we can't have any Zayden point of views until he stops telling lies. So I don't know what's going on. I thought we had like mentioned all the lies we possibly could and all the secrets we possibly could but apparently not also i'm hoping these secrets and lies that she mentioned don't have to do with violet i hope that he has been completely honest with her since she's in on this rebellion now i really hope so because if he's spearheading this rebellion with her brother and 
she's supposed to be fighting alongside him and he's keeping secrets from her this is not going to be good being blindsided as a rebellion leader or as any leader that is so not good oh my god i just i want to read this right now oh my god and what's coming on the 15th what is coming on the 15th that's all i want to know i hope you enjoyed hearing the excerpt and seeing my reaction until next time